Welcome back. In this video, we start working on the chess logic project. We will write some simple classes that we need to represent the state of the game. Before we begin, let me close these tabs. In the Solution Explorer, I'll collapse the chess UI project, delete class 1, and create an enum called player. I'll make it public. and change class to enum. The player enum will be used to store which player's turn it is and who won the game. But we will also use it to represent the color of the chess pieces. Let's give it three enum values. None, white and black. The none value is useful because we can set the winning player to none in case of a draw. A common operation we need is to find the opponent of a given player. So for convenience, let's add an extension method to player. I'll add a static class here called player extensions. And give it a method called opponent. It takes a player as parameter and returns that player's opponent. Inside the method, we switch on the player parameter if it's player white. We return player black. And if it's player black, we return player white. We'll always pass player black or player white to this method. But to make the code compile, let's add a default case which returns player none. This code works fine, but if you are using a recent version of .NET, you might see some dots under the switch keyword. If I put my cursor there, you can see that Visual Studio wants me to use a switch expression instead. Just click Control dot or Alt enter and convert it. The switch expression is a bit more compact so I'll use that whenever possible. Now we are done with the player enum. Let me just get rid of the unused imports. And now we can add a position class. This class represents a position or square on the board. It needs two properties, one for the row and one for the column. I'll use the convention that the square at row zero and column zero is the upper left corner. This implies that rows increase from top to bottom and columns increase from left to right. Next, let's add a constructor which takes a row and a column. And stores them in the properties.
Later, it will be convenient to know the color of the square at a given position. The position 00, zero for example, is a white or light square, whereas the position 21 is a black or dark square. To support this check, we add a square color method. It returns a player value because we also use player to represent colors. If the sum of the row and column is even, then the square is white. Otherwise, if the sum is odd, then the square is black. We also need to overwrite equals and get hash code, so the position class can be used as the key in a dictionary. Instead of doing so manually, we can just get Visual Studio to do it for us. Just create an empty line, press Ctrl dot, then click Generate equals and get hash code. Make sure that both row and column is selected, and check Generate operators as well. Then press OK. And now we have a working implementation of equals and get hash code. And because of these overloaded operators, we can also compare positions using equals equals and not equals. We'll come back to this class in a minute, but first we need to add a direction class. This class will be convenient when we generate moves, because all pieces move in certain directions. We represent a direction as a row delta and a column delta. That is, the change in row and column from a given position. The constructor for this class just initializes these values. It will also be convenient to have the ability to add two directions together. For that, we will override the plus operator. It takes two direction parameters and returns a new direction which combines them. So in the body, we return a new direction and set its row delta equal to the sum of the row deltas for direction 1 and direction 2. And similarly for the column delta. Let's overwrite the multiplication operator as well, so we can scale a direction. Again, we return a new direction. This time with scalar times the arguments row and column delta.
finally, we can create all the basic directions we need. We start with the north or up direction. To move up from a given position, we subtract one row and leave the column unchanged. So the row delta should be minus one and the column delta should be zero. For the south direction, row delta is plus one and column delta is zero. For east, row delta is zero and column delta is one. And for west, row delta is zero and column delta is minus one. We can also create directions for diagonal moves. For northeast, we can simply use our overloaded plus operator to add north and east. And similarly for northwest, southeast and southwest. That's it for the direction class. Now let's head back to position and add one final operation. Here we will overload the plus operator. It takes a position and a direction as parameters and returns the position you get by taking one step in the given direction. So we return a new position with row set to position.row plus direction.row delta and column set to position.column plus direction dot column delta. With the position and direction class, we can now easily express things like from the square at row zero and column four, take three steps southeast. This will be super helpful when we start implementing how all the pieces move. In the next part, we will create classes for all the different types of pieces and for the chessboard itself. See you then.